Hello there. Today we're going to work on the lead code num problem number seven, reverse integer. Let's look at the uh, the problem. Given a 32-bit signed integer, reverse digits of an integer. So that that is to say, if you're given number one to three, your output is going to be three to one. If you give him minus 1 to 3, the output is going to be minus 3 to 1. If you're giving the number 1 to 0, your output will be 2, 1. Okay, seems like pretty simple. So let's see how we're going to implement this function. So we're going to just define a return value variable and uh, we're going to do so the idea is we're going to do a loop and uh, by doing the module of the number we get the last digit of that number and uh, reverse the number basically by impending each last digit number uh, to the new form number so so we're going to say while so the input is x right x not equal to zero we're going to do this um, the last digit we're going to give a A variable says digit equals to what? X module ten, right? So that's that's how we get the last digit. Now the um, the return value we're gonna say return value is what is The return value of the last time times a 10 right we're going to move that digit uh, then add the last digit okay so that's our return value now we're going to move that digit move the pointer and um, because we look at the last uh, digit uh, each time once we're done, we're going to move and say x would be x divided by 10. Okay, then we can do, continue doing that. And after the loop, we just return, return the value. Okay. Let's see if we, we can run the code. Okay, it does run. Okay, it says the input is one to three, output is three to one. It's what it is expected. Now we need to be a little bit careful here. Um, it says thirty-two bit signed integer, but there's meaning of it. If we look at the uh, the note, it says assume we are dealing with an environment which could only store integers within the 32-bit signed integer range. So that's the 32-bit integer range. For the purpose of this problem, assume that your function returns zero when the reversed integer overflows. Okay, we need to consider the integer will overflow. So how are we going to approach that? Now let's try a number to see if uh, it, it overflows. We know, you know our test case is this. Let's put a, maybe an integer really large. It's one, two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine digit. So if we look at the uh, upper bound, uh, integer is quite large. We're going to reach about ten digit. So let's add another one. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten digit number. Okay, let's see if we can run this code to see if we run into any problems. So maybe we're going to run into a problem that it will overflow. Okay, so our input is this. Look at our output. Obviously, this is not the expected output. So the uh, the expect output it says zero means overflow. Even okay, this number is not uh, what we expecting. So how can we approach this? Obviously, if you look at the process, we are. Uh, getting our number each digit here we basically you know move that digit from left to right you know by uh, by multiple 10 and plus the last digit of the the, the reverse number so we are forming uh, that output one digit at a time now think of this if the number to go overflow. So what's going to happen? Okay, the moment you times 10, say the last one, for example, the moment it times 10, uh, that value is going to go overflow. In other words, if we divide if we split this step by um, maybe two step so we um, introduce maybe a, a temp variable here um, the temp is going to be our last time this value times 10 so this that okay Now, the temp divided by 10 should be equal to, if we test this, okay, it should always return true, okay, because that's how we get temp. temp equals the return value times 10 unless it's overflow unless this number for example very really large with times time it overflows then it will not equal in that case we just return zero by definition by the note okay so here Our digit, of course, our digit will be um, we got our digit here. Um, we already we already did, you know multiple by ten, so our return value will still need to add the the, the temp. We're still going to add the digit. Right. That's what we need to do. And of course we need to assign to if everything checks out, we need to assign it to the number. Okay, so that's a little bit of modification to handle the overflow issue. Now let's run it again. Okay, let's look at the result. 
um, our input is this number and output is zero. It's what expected uh, because it's overflow. So by definition, the the result is going to be the function returns zero. Okay, let's try to submit the result. Okay, our solution is accepted. Wow, look at the runtime. 32 milliseconds faster than 99% of C-Shop under submission. So that's really good. That's uh, far better than I expected. Okay, that's, that's all for today. And uh, please remember to uh, subscribe and like. Happy coding. Bye-bye.